Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to sh start out this week by sharing a quote with you. Um, so Neil deGrasse Tyson, who I'm sure many of you have heard about or watched on TV, he's an astrophysicist, author, and um, communicator of all things science. So he often talks of science literacy, and he says that part of what it is to be scientifically literate, it's not simply, do you know what DNA is or what the Big Bang Theory is? It's an aspect of science literacy. The biggest part of it is that, or is, do you know how to think about information that's presented in front of you? I found this quote particularly relevant to my endorsement, secondary biology. Um, in stages three and four of reading, which I'll talk about in a minute, students begin to read for new information and then for analysis. These stages span middle and high school, which is what I'll likely be teaching. So I think it's really important to remember that literacy does not simply mean understanding content, but it means um, truly thinking about what you're learning and making connections between the new pieces of information that are presented to you. So now I'll move on to the stages of reading that we learned about. So stage zero is considered the pre-reading stage. This is the time where students have not, um, they've not yet begun formal schooling, but they are receiving exposure to letters, words, and books through observation. Uh, singing the alphabet song, reading books, with children are both great examples of getting them ready to read. Some of you may have had um, the professor at SPU, his name is Dr. Showerman. So I had him last quarter and he actually told our class something that I come back to pretty often when I'm kind of thinking about teaching and reflecting on what I'm learning. Um, so what he told us was that the number one thing a parent can do to prepare their child for um, a positive academic experience is um, to provide them with a rich reading environment. And on the other side of the thing of the fence, the what you the worst thing you could do is um, give your child like unmediated screen time. So I, I found that really interesting um, that it has such a you know huge impact on how they'll perform later in school. So that just shows you how stage zero is super important because um, children know children begin to learn what literacy is and why it's so valuable, um, and they begin to build their vocabulary. So the next stage is when formal schooling begins. Students begin to learn the alphabet, um, including the order and sounds of each letter. They begin to have phonemic awareness and understand how different words can be manipulated. Um, another little story here is I've been working as a nanny for two and a half years for the same family. Um, when I started, the kids were two, the little boy was two and the girl was four and a half. Um, it's always been a joy for me to read to them every day because I like it and they also like it um, and it's really special because I've gotten the opportunity to see them develop in the such a short amount of time like two and a half years doesn't seem very long but the the older sis the sister has gone from you know stage zero and now she's in the thick of it with stage one so it's just really cool to be a part of that um, process and I think after reading and listening to the lecture for this week I actually can make reading an even more enriching experience for them now. Um, okay, the next stage is stage two, and that occurs around the second grade. The stages consider the fluency stage. Children are capable of accurate decoding with expression and pace. Um, teachers at this stage should be reading difficult texts out loud to the kids um, and then having a discussion for vocabulary and concepts after so that they understand what was kind of out outside of their knowledge thus far. Um, it is really crucial for students to reach this stage of fluency to avoid falling behind a reading level, which could set them behind all the way through high school unless there's some sort of intervention that occurs. So stage three occurs um, somewhere between fourth grade and middle school. And this is where children begin to read with the objective to learn new ideas. They should be exposed to a wide variety of texts and understand their purpose for reading those texts. Um, students also begin to make predictions, understand context, ask questions, identify big picture ideas. So stage three is all about um, reading and learning for new information. Stage four, this is where students begin to read for multiple points of view. So this stage occurs at the high school level, so kind of where I'll be teaching. Um, in my opinion, high school is where struggles with content literacy will really become apparent and you know really affect the, the student 
So if students are not at stage four reading level, they will likely be struggling to analyze and th synthesize dis discipline specific texts. Um, stage four is where students begin also begin to talk about controversial topics. Um, in a science class, it could be climate change or stem cell research. Um, I don't know anything like that. So the students here are able to identify that there are multiple stances when considering a topic. Um, and they'll also begin to maybe understand their own stance. Um, the last stage we learned about is stage five. This is where students begin to construct and reconstruct their own meaning. This stage is usually reached in college and beyond. So now reading and writing should be intrinsically motivating. Um, readers can define their own purpose of reading, whether it is academic, personal, or professional. And in this stage, uh, culture and identity are embraced when making connections with the text. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk about now what I think adolescent reading should look like in a biology class. I think that students should be reading for content and specific biology vocabulary. In our reading this week, the authors pointed out that one of the biggest difficulties for students is the conceptual density of science materials. Um, they mentioned that a high school textbook may contain up to 3,000 words that are brand new to students. So that's a challenge. And students need to be able to you know, push through that. Um, students should also be reading for variables, hypotheses, and conclusions, and all other parts of the scientific process. They should be able to identify not only what these things are, but also how they're connected to the other um, sections of the, of the report or whatever they're working on. Um, students should also be reading for biases. So they should ask the question, is this author biased and how might that bias affect their writing? And you know, what are my own biases? Um, the author of the reading also pointed out how important it is to have literacy when it comes to symbols and notation. And that's actually something I hadn't even thought of, but you know, scientific notation, or if you're writing down your genotype or the symbol Delta for change in something. So those are all symbols and that's not your typical alphabet that you've been learning. So that's also a whole nother type of literacy that students are gonna need to have to reach. Um, along with reading in a biology class, they also need to be able to write, obviously, in a concise way that conveys their point, um, correctly using the vocabulary. Um, so writing like lab reports, formal assessments with short answers, or just reflections are all really important for students to be able to complete. Um, okay, and now last I'm gonna talk about two problems with reading in biology and then a couple solutions that I thought of. So the first problem is with textbooks. Historically, students have always struggled with learning from textbooks, yet we still rely on them. They're dull and provide little student engagement. I think that textbooks are definitely a valuable and necessary resource, but I think they should be used as a resource and not the main study tool. So teachers should focus on um, other instructional strategies like focusing on group work or implementing KWL charts or working um, with the textbook with maybe a questioning and a summarizing technique. So it's more meaningful when the students are interacting with that text rather just, you know, in one ear out the other. Um, the other problem I want to talk about is the lack of teaching content specific literacy, literacy skills in schools. Um, the authors of the reading point out that by the time middle by the time middle and high school students are being challenged by disciplinary, disciplinary texts, literacy instruction often has stopped altogether or has become a reiteration of general reading or study skills. So the solution to this problem would be to implement specific activities that teach content-specific literacy. Um, some of the recommendations from excerpt, experts were to actually teach comprehension strategies as new topics are being taught or scaffolding the instruction where the teacher might show the students how to predict, then the class has a prediction, and then there's a discussion. I think if students had more exposure to specific content literacy activities, then they would improve and also feel more confident in their abilities. Um, okay, that is all I have tonight, and I will see you guys next week.